All right, so I did forget to push record, guys. The ones that are in the class right now, y'all are working these three. The first three are here. You can see we put six over 10, seven stayed in front. We simplify. 76 over 100, there's not a number in front. Then we simplified. Seven over 10, nine stays in front. This one would not simplify. Remember, one number behind it gives me 10, two numbers give me 100, one number again gives me 10. All right, so I want you working on those next three. And we'll go over them in just a moment. All right, so setting up number four. We talked about before you kind of started this on your own, we talked about that to make a fraction decimal, we're going to be doing division. When I do division, am I worried about the 12 right now? No. We just care whatever is down goes where? At the door, and that leaves one to be in the house. Can eight go into one? No. No. So, Ray Chan, you can tell me, what am I going to add to that, Jackson? Perfect. So, we're going to put the decimal and a zero, and we have to make sure we raise the decimal straight up to the root. Now, we're going to ask ourselves, how many times can eight go into ten? Um, Gage? Once. And one times eight is? When I subtract, I get two. What am I going to do since I have something left over? What am I going to have to do here? Juanita? Add a, zero and bring it down. Add a zero and bring it down. I'll make my line a little bit longer on top. All right, how many times will 8 go into 20, Jake? 2. 2, make sure you put that on top of the second zero. 2 times 8 is? 16. 16. What is 20 minus 16 going to give me, Jason? 4. Let's add a zero and bring it down. Jordan, do you have a question? Right, how many times will 8 go into 40, Tyler? 5 times. 5 times 8 is? 40. When I subtract, I get? 0. How am I going to write my answer here, Jason? Mm -hmm. So we're going to put 12 in front, and then my .125 that we got, that's our decimal. The 12 stays in front because 12 was a whole number in the fraction, so it's also a whole number in my answer. All right, are there any questions about number four? All right, so let's set up number five. We have 32. We have five over 20. So how am I going to set up that division problem, Alexis? And you put 20 at the door and five inside. Perfect. 20 at the door, five inside. So we're going to put 20 and then five. Okay, can 20 go into five? No, so what am I going to do, um, Ella? Not quite yet. Mm -hmm. Add the decimal and raise that to the roof and add a zero. Perfect. So we add our decimal, raise it to the roof, and a zero. How many times can 20 go into 50, Ethan? Two times. Two times 20 is? 40. When I subtract, I get 10. I have something left over, so I'm going to add another zero, bring it down. How many times will 20 go into 100? Brianna? 5. 5 times 20 is? 100. So I have nothing left over. How am I going to write the answer for number 5? How am I going to write that answer, Griffin? 32.25. Excellent job. All right, number six. So number six, some of you kind of realize that based on how we made numbers fractions, you can probably make this a decimal just as easily. How would I work it out, though, if I wanted to work it out just to make sure I know I've got the right decimal? Tyler? Yep, 10 goes at the door. It's down and 7 in the house. All right, what? Can 10 go into 7? No. no. So what am I going to do, Jake? Decimal, raise it up, add a zero. How many times will 10 go into 70? Seven. seven. And seven times 10 is? See, when I subtract, I get zero. How am I going to write this answer? How would I write this answer, Jackson? Point just point 0.7. Is there anything to add in front of that decimal? No. So we just leave it as point 0.7. Some of you all realize that 7 tenths as a fraction 
would also be seven tenths as a decimal. If you know that relationship, I'm fine with just bam, there's our answer. All right, um, Jordan? Yes, you can put zero in front of the decimal, just we can't put zeros in front of fractions. Perfect job, yes. All right, are there any other questions about the next three? All right, let's look at the next three. So here we are now simplifying. So this is what we just did in our math workshop. It's what we did on Monday and Tuesday. All right, I'm going to pause it while you work those out. Number seven. What would I use to simplify number seven? What can I do here? Um, Jason. All right, you can do nine. Mason, what'd you use? Three. Ethan? Nine. Jackson, what'd you use? Nine. What'd you use, Juanita? Nine. What'd you use, Griffin? Nine. Tyler? Nine. Jay? Three. Jordan, what'd you use? You use three, Madison, okay. Um, so if you use nine, awesome. Um, a lot of people use three as well. I do think that 27 and 36, both of us probably know that multiplication fact of nine. Um, if we use three, that's fine. I'll do three. So 27 divided by three gives me nine. And then 36 divided by three gives me 12. Now, nine and 12 can be deceiving because we would like to think that would stop, but does it stop there? What number can go into nine and 12, Gage? Three. So if you use three, that's fine. We have to do it again because three times three equals what? Nine, nine which is what a lot of us use to start with. So three, nine divided by three is three and 12 divided by three is four. So if you use nine to start with, that's fine. We all should have three fourths. Is there anyone who did not get three fourths? All right. Eight, I think some of us are still finishing up number eight, but let's go ahead and talk about it. What do we want to do first on number eight? Um, Juanita, what did you do first? Uh, divided by two. Divided by two, okay, we can do that. So dividing by two, dividing by two, 38 divided by two. What does that give me? Ella? 19 over two. 19 over two. All right, will that simplify anymore? No. No, I can't simplify it anymore, but is that a good way to leave my answer? No, so what am I going to do to make my answer look better? Griffin? Divide. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to do 2 into 19. How many times can 2 go into 19, Jason? 9 times, and 9 times 2 is? When I subtract, I get... All right, so I have 9 on top. That's my whole amount. Is there anything in front I need to combine that with? No, so how am I going to write my answer out, Gray? Gray? Nine is the whole. My leftover one goes on top and on the bottom is the two. We still have two. That did not change. All right. Good job. Let's look at number nine. I have it kind of squeezed over to the side. What can I use to simplify number nine? Um, Jordan. Six. We can divide by six. What did you use, Jason? Oh, I used two. You used two? What did you use, Ethan? Huh? Two. We'll go with two. Most of us probably saw eight and two and saw it's an even number, so we can divide by two. If you use a different number, Jordan, we should still get the same answer, okay? Very good. All right, 18 divided by two is? Nine. And 42 divided by two is? 21. Okay, be very careful here. Nine and 21 will still, still simplify. Brianna, what can I use? Three. We're going to divide those by three. So I end up with 6. 9 divided by 3 is? 3. And 21 divided by 3? Can that simplify anymore? No. All right. So we have changed them to fractions, changed them to decimals. We have simplified. The next thing we did was we added and subtracted. All right. So here is one adding problem, one subtracting problem. I want you to work those two out. Those are our next two problems. Tomorrow. All right, we need a good denominator for this problem. Madison. Perfect, so she said we're not going to change the first fraction. 
But if I multiply the second fraction by 2, that's going to give me 5 over 6 minus 1 times 2 is 2 and 3 times 2 is 6. So now those match. When I subtract 5 minus 2, what am I going to get as my answer, Jason? 3 over 6. And is that a good way to leave my answer, Mason? I can divide them by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, and 6 divided by 3 gives me All right, so I'm going to pause here because these are two questions like what are going to be on your test. There will be some that simple. There will be some of the harder ones that we've worked, but there will be some that are that easy. Okay? What is a good denominator for 11, for 8 and 5? Nolan? Yeah, so we're going to multiply the first fraction by 5 because that's going to give me 40. And the second fraction we're going to multiply times 8. So 5 times 3 gives me 15. 5 times 8 gives me 40. Plus, on my other fraction, 3 times 8 gives me 24. And 5 times 8 gives me 40. When I add those up, 15 plus 24. Jason? 39 over... 40. Can I simplify that? No. So that is my answer. That is how I would leave it. Yeah. All right. So the next problem that we're going to look at is numbers 12 and 13. 12 and 13. So you can tell these have mixed numbers. They might end up being a little bit more difficult. Take your time. Find that denominator again. Right. So on number 12, what would be a good denominator for these two problems to have so we can make sure we get these done before first spell? Um, Brianna? 14. So 14 is already 14, but if I multiply 7 times 2, then they can match. So let's make sure we also do the top. So now my 2 stays the same. 6 times 2 is? 12. 7 times 2 is? 14 plus 18 and 11 over... 14. All right, when we add those, 12 plus 11, what's that going to give me, Amelia? 23 over 14, and 2 and 18 give me 20. Is this a good way to leave my answer? No, we have a big number on top, so what am I going to do, Jason? Divide. So I'm going to say, okay, 14 will go into 23 how many times? Once, so we're subtracting 14. Can I do 3 minus 4? No. So we're going to borrow from 2. So now it's 13 minus 4, which is 9. Okay, hey, what am I going to do with that 1 on top? What am I doing with the 1 on top? Brianna? Add it to the 20. So now that becomes 21. And what about my leftovers? What do we do with our leftovers? Alex? What are we going to do with those leftovers, Juanita? 9 goes on top, 14 goes on the bottom. Okay, so there's our answer. It won't simplify. All right, what is a good denominator? Do you have a question, Jordan? Yes. All right, what is a good denominator for 7 and 10? A good denominator here, Juanita? 70, yes. Yeah. So we're going to multiply 7 times 10 and 2 times 10. 10 times 7 and 8 times 7. So that leaves me with 4. 2 times 10 is? 20. 7 times 10 is? Minus 1. 8 times 7 is? 56 over 10 times 7, which is? 70. Can I do 20 minus 56? Now what am I going to do, Ethan? So we're going to borrow 1 from 4. That makes that 3. And he said we're going to add 70 to 20 because that's what's on the bottom. So 20 plus 70 gives me 90. 90. That, that's correct. I tried putting 50 for some reason. So I get 90 over 70. Let me just rewrite that. 90 over 70 minus 1 and 56 over 70. 
Now can I do 90 minus 56? Yes. So, just to make sure I bar correctly, 90 minus 56, go into the side. Can you all see where I'm working at? All right, can I do 0 minus 6? No. So I'm going to bar. 9 becomes 8. 10 minus 6 is? 4. four. And 8 minus 5 is? Three. 3. So I end up with 34 over 70. And 3 minus 1 is? 2. two. All right, can I leave my answer like this? No. no. What can I divide these by? Mason? Divide by 2. So I still have 2. 34 divided by 2 is? About? Why am I minusing here? So can I do 20 minus 56? No. So that's why we had to borrow, and that's where I got the 90 from, 20 plus the 70. Okay? All right. So here, 34 divided by 2. What's that going to give me, Mason? 17 over 35. And that will not simplify any more. Okay? Now we did that kind of quickly. Are there any questions about number 13? All right. Um, please remember, guys, if you got stuck on this one or were confused, you can go back and look at it tonight. All right, 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Number 14 is great because it already has matching denominators, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So if I add five, um, 10 plus 13, I get 20, over 15. I was able to just go ahead and do it since the denominator is matched. 5 plus 4 is 9. All right, is that a good way to leave my answer? No. Okay. So we're going to do that division. We're going to say 15 will go into... 23, because we have a big number on top. How many times will 15 go to 23, Jason? Once. Once. One times 15 is 15. We are going to have to borrow here. So I borrowed from 2. Now it's 13 minus 15 minus 5, which is 8. All right, what am I doing with that 1 I got on top? Add it to the whole number. So 9 becomes... 10, my new top number is what's left over. So I have 8 over 15. All right, I want to get number 15 set up. I'm going to give you a second to work it out. How am I going to split up 11? Someone help me out. How would I split up 11? Juanita. What is it going to turn into? Jackson. Ten because we took one away from eleven. Fourteen over fourteen because fourteen's in that bottom. I want them to match, so I just made a matching fraction. Okay, and then we still have minus three and five fourteenths equals. Okay, fourteen minus five nine over and ten minus three. Can that simplify? Hey, last one. You do not have to write this down, but I'm going to give you a second to read it. Do I need to zoom out some? I'm going to give you a moment to read it. What we have effectively done, guys, is we're working through the problems on the study guide. I'm passing out the study guide before you leave. Please listen, guys. If you had problems that you didn't understand or that you got stuck on or that you know, you could probably work again. If you have a blank sheet, rework the ones you know you had trouble with because we worked them and got the correct answer. So you kind of have an answer key to check with. All right, number 16. Can someone tell me what we're going to do to work out number 16? What am I doing to work out number 16? All right, what am I doing to work out number 16? Um, Jackson, first of all, once you get your paper, you can go ahead and take one copy of that. All right, so Jackson, why do you think, why am I adding these two 
fractions. Why am I adding here? Um, Jackson. Yeah, so I wanted to check. It said, normally if you're eating something, you think of that as taking away. But it says, I ate some in the after at lunch, then I ate some more in the afternoon. I want to know all of them that were ate. So I want to put together what was eaten. But do we have to do this again at home? I want you to look over any that you had trouble with, work them again, and use your sheet from today as an answer check. Yes, ma'am. Right, so what two fractions does it give me in the word problem? Um, Mason? Three sevenths. Three sevenths. And how would I write three sevenths? Three over seven. And then it also gives me one fourth, which I would write as. All right. And since I'm putting together all the potato chips that were eaten, we're going to add them. All right. What is a good denominator for seven and four? Nolan? 28. So we're going to multiply seven times four and the top times four. We're going to multiply four times seven and the top times seven. So my new problem, three times four is? 12 over 28 plus, and you can just number 16 on your paper, write 16 down, and then put your work with it like you've been doing the others. You don't have to copy down the word problem. 1 times 7 is? 7, and 4 times 7 is? 28. So now when I add that, 12 plus 7, what does that give me? Mason? Nineteen over twenty-eight. Okay, so there's my fraction. It's a word problem. So how would I write my answer? Give me a good answer here. Madison? Miss Sawyer ate 1928 of the chips or of the bag of chips, either way. Okay? All right, the very last thing on the study guide is the vocabulary. So if you will just look on your study guide that you have in your hand, down at the bottom is vocabulary. You should see a list like this. Do y'all see that at the bottom of your study guide? Yep. All right. So let's talk about what those answers should be. Yeah, we just did the study guide, yes. All right. We just did the study guide. So remember, the whole point, guys, we just worked everything on the study guide on a separate sheet. So if you want to go back and practice any of them, now you've got an answer key. That's what this paper is that we just did for the study guide so you can still go back and practice ones that you know. All right, like if there is a problem that I was doing and you were like, Miss Sawyer, can you slow down? You're going too fast on this one. That might be a good one to look at and rework tonight, okay? Um, Jackson? So you're saying all this is not all about the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And to study the vocabulary, please. Um, uh, Ethan? Yes. All right. Number 17 says, in order to blank, you must reduce a fraction to its lowest terms by canceling the lowest common factor of both the numerator and the denominator. What makes you let a fraction lower? What is going to allow you to make fraction lower? Simplifying. So we're going to write simplify. In order to simplify. I would prepare as if there was not, because this is your second time doing this vocabulary. So prepare like there is not going to be a word bank. Correct. <laughs> Number 18. The blank is the result of division. What would be the answer to a division problem? Raise your hand, please, Brianna. The quotient. The quotient. All right. What would be the answer to subtraction, Alexis? Difference. The difference. Difference. What is the answer to addition, Mason? The sum. What is the number below the line in the fraction and used as the divisor, Griffin? 
Denominator. A lot of my people are like, that's such a long word. Car riders to be dismissed. Car riders to be dismissed. And have had trouble spelling them. Sound it out. D. D E. Nom. N O M. In a tour. No. No. There is not a word bank on your test paper. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Denominator. It's written right there. So there should be no excuse for spelling it. Good call, Isabella. Great catch. All right. The blank is the result of multiplication. So what is the answer to a multiplication problem, Tyler? The product. And what is the number above the line in a fraction? Um, Alexis. Numerator. 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 Numerator.